The question I get asked the most as a motoring journalist is, probably predictably, what's the best car you've driven? And you know, the answer to that is harder to come up with than you might think. So to help me come up with the definitive response for the next time that I get asked that down the pub, I've enlisted the help of a few friends in the shape of hundred or so very experienced motoring journalists from around the world. They make up the World Car of the Year jury. But before I tell you which cars we think are the best in the world, you know what to do. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and switch your notifications on because if you're into electric cars, the best, the worst and the indifferent, then this is the place to be. Those the journalist friends in question make up the global jury of the World Car Awards. So think of this as a bit like the Oscars for the car industry. Every year over a hundred journalists from different countries around the world get together to drive, discuss and debate the cars that are up for one of six awards to decide on the winners. Funnily enough, this process happens not far from Hollywood, although we don't have a red carpet or worse sparkly frocks which come to think of it is a shame. Anyway, uh, the votes from our deliberations are in and we now know which cars have made the shortlist for the overall World Car of the Year. You know, they couldn't be more different, but they do all have one thing in common. They're electric. And they are the Kia EV9, the Volvo EX30 and the BYD Seal. Cars that we are also very big fans of here at Electrifying. And by a genuine and slightly strange quirk of fate, I just um, happened to have two of the three cars here together at Electrifying HQ on the very day that those uh, results were announced. We have the Kia EV9 and the Volvo EX30. So I thought I'd give you a quick roundup of uh, what it is about the three cars that makes them, in our opinion, award worthy. Now, the first thing that I think is interesting about the lineup is that not one of the final three comes from either a European or North American car maker. Yes, there are cars from those brands that make up um, the shortlist in other categories, but the three are from countries that are relatively new to making cars, China and Korea. Now, I know what you're thinking. Volvo is a long established Swedish brand, but it's now owned by a humongous Chinese company, Geely, and the EX30 is actually built in China too. So there's not a lot that's Swedish going on with that car, unless you've been on a trip to Ikea, I suppose. You know, the car industry is going through a massive um, shake-up, probably the biggest since the horse and car first gave way to the car. New entrants are entering the market, relatively new brands like Kia are really cutting through and giving the established players a massive run for their money. And I think that is a great thing. So back to our final three and let's kick off with the Kia EV9 which is basically a minivan as my American friends like to call them or a people mover as we prefer in Europe disguised as an SUV. So this is a massively practical three row load lugger that can seat six or seven and competes with cars like the Rivian R1S and the Tesla Model X but it costs less and is arguably better looking. The Volvo is another SUV, but at the other end of the scale. It is the smallest SUV Volvo has ever made, and it has definitely been built with the city in mind. It's also the most affordable of our trio of finalists, and Volvo is hoping that it will attract new buyers who are looking to make the switch to electric for the first time. And on to the BYD seal. And even though the world car jurors have just decided that the seal is one of the best three cars in the world, a lot of you won't be interested in it because it's not an SUV. And I get it. SUVs are practical and they make you look like you do exciting things at the weekend. But please, please don't write saloons off just yet. They are great to drive and importantly, are more efficient because of the aerodynamics. Now, I personally think there is still a very strong case for saloons. And as my evidence, may I present the Tesla Model 3, one of the best selling cars in the world. And interestingly, a car that the BYD seal beat when we put the two head to head in an electrifying test. So we'll put a link to that video in the description and also at the end of this one. So do make sure you take a look at it. Now, because the three cars are so different, of course you'd never put them head to head. And the jury, well, we vote on each individual car. 
were voting on loads of different factors, how they drive the design, practicality, efficiency, value for money. And that's why the three cars up for the Oscars equivalent of Best Picture are impossible to compare like for like. So let's take a quick look at them individually. We're really big fans of the way the seal looks at electrifying. And they also have a great range of colours, including our favourite, shadow green. So the BYD bit, well, that stands for build your dreams. And in some parts of the world, you'll find the slogan on the back of its cars. But not here in Europe, where we are quite cynical and not massive fans of inspirational quotes. So it's been dropped, which I do think is a good decision. And it also makes more of those lovely wraparound tail lights. Lights, well, they're a big thing on the Kia EV9 too. I first saw this car at the start of 2023 in a studio in Korea and it wowed me. I thought it looked brilliant. Yes, it is massive. After all, it's basically been built to carry a seven-a-side football team. And an electric six- or seven-seater is a very welcome addition to the world of electric cars. But we also think that it looks great. From the constellation-shaped headlights and all those angles to the upright LED running lights and the sleek pop-out handles, I just love how fresh and striking it looks. I had a similar reaction to the Volvo EX30 when I first caught sight of it in a studio last year too. Like the Kia, it's got a great piece of design. It has a simple, pared-back look, and it's actually the smallest SUV that Volvo has made to date, as I've already said. But it's also the fastest accelerating car it's ever built, and the greenest. Volvo is focusing heavily on keeping the manufacturing process of its cars as sustainable as possible. And the company says that the EX30 has the lowest carbon footprint of any car it's produced to date. For me, one of the strong points on each of our three finalists was the interior. Um, all very different though, and I do think it's worth taking a quick look at each of them. Um, so the EV9, well, this has definitely been built with a family in mind, a big family, and it is such a practical car. It's got absolutely everything you could need loads of um, USB-C points around the place for charging up the family's devices, tons of cup holders, loads of space, lots of great innovative storage. Of course, you get the two rows. You've got the option of uh, a bench seat in the middle row like this, or you can get what they call two captain's chairs, which are individual, and which in some markets turn round so you can face the back row. We get that in the UK and it's a really nice feature. What really strikes me um, in here is that the quality is good even as you go further back into the third row. Um, so those passengers that do sit in the back won't feel too short-changed. But despite all of that, what really stands out for me in this car, unusually for me, is the software. Um, so you've got this big screen in front of you, driver's information here, uh, sort of infotainment system, all the info about the car, navigation on the left-hand side. And actually, we say all the time, oh, systems are intuitive. This really is intuitive. You know, you can move between functions really uh, quickly. The graphics are nice and clear. And there are just some really brilliant features on it. Let me just show you a couple of them. Things like the um, EV panel, which gives you, in a really easy to understand way, all the information you need to know about the performance of the battery and the efficiency. And there is also a brilliant thing that I haven't seen on any other electric car yet, although you will probably tell me in the comments below that I've missed it on a few, um, which is you, you're able to activate independently the preconditioning of the battery. So this is basically getting the battery ready to take a charge. It's normally linked to the in-car navigation system, um, which means if you're using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, it just doesn't work and actually what you're able to do on this if you are plugged into CarPlay and you know you're going to charge in 10 minutes is just activate it independently I think that's a great feature um, there's also something else that really shows you how you're using the energy it splits it up in a really simple way um, between the, whether the energy is going to driving to the electronic devices or the climate control so you're able to say oh kids in the back turn your heated seats off, you're using up you know, too much energy, or stop charging all your devices at once if you're running low on range. It's done in a way that isn't overwhelming, and I think a lot of technology these days, you almost feel like you're gonna have to sit down and you know, spend half a day getting used to the car. This, you get in, you can navigate around this, and there are some really smart features. 
it's definitely one of the strong points on this car. The BYD is probably the most traditional of the three cars. Whereas the EX30 has gone down the route of less is more, the seal is very much more is more. There is a lot going on inside, but it's busy without being fussy. Well, perhaps it's a little too fussy for some of us, but a lot of people like a bit of fuss. You know, you pay your money, you take your choice. What it means is that you get physical buttons and switches that a lot of us do like to use, and it is also very well specced. Standard equipment levels have really impressed us, and one of the two screens rotates to 90 degrees if you want it to. The build quality and finish of the seal is also hard to fault, and we think the interior is genuinely a comfortable place to be. Now, Volvo might be owned by a Chinese company, but they are still based in Sweden, and in terms of design, stay really true to those Swedish roots. I think if you ask one of those um, AI image generators to throw up a picture of Scandinavian chic, it would probably throw up this interior. I mean, just take a look at it. It is so Swedish, isn't it? It just feels like one of those um, expensive items of Swedish furniture that you find in high-end stores. As you can see, there are virtually no buttons or switches. Everything is controlled via the touchscreen or through voice commands. And incidentally, the voice activation is excellent and it does work well. Um, one of the things I really like in here, actually, these upright vents for the climate control, which I think are really chic. Now, it's not everyone's cup of tea using a touch screen or voice activation to control everything from the height of the steering wheel to opening the glove box to adjusting the mirrors. And I think perhaps where it becomes a little bit more problematic is when you're having to go through the menus to turn on things like the fog lights because those safety features can't be voice activated. But overall, I think there is a simplicity to it in here that I do really like. And that simplicity brings benefits. If you reduce the number of buttons and switches in here, that reduces the number of parts that you need to manufacture. So that helps to keep the cost down. And there's also an environmental benefit. Of course, cars produce a huge amount of their emissions in their manufacturing, particularly electric cars. Uh, and by, again, reducing the number of parts that are manufactured, it helps to keep the carbon emissions down. And Volvo says that the EX30 has the lowest carbon footprint of any of its cars to date. Another plus for all of these cars is that they've been built on platforms, that's the hardware underneath, which has been designed for electric cars. And this is very, very good because it does mean less compromise on things like battery efficiency and space. All three of the finalists scored the highest a plus score in our electrifying.com efficiency rating, which assesses the real world efficiency and driving range of electric cars. Both the Kia and the Volvo come with some clever EV technology, something called Vehicle to Load, which lets you power an array of electrical appliances by plugging in a standard three pin into a socket in the car. It's actually really useful for things like charging up an e-bike or a vacuum cleaner. Vehicle to Load is one of the unique features of electric cars that I really like. And the Kia is the only car of the three finalists that also gets another brilliant EV feature, Vehicle to Grid. So this takes using your car's battery as an energy source to a new level, and it will allow you to use it to help balance the energy capacity of the power grid. All three of these cars drive well in their own way, and an electrifying test have beaten rivals in their class. But as with all cars, they're not without their issues. And if you want to know more about the details on the all important battery, range, charging, efficiency, and how they drive, then we have individual deep dive reviews of them here on our YouTube channel and also over at electrifying.com. So back to the question, what is the best car I've driven? And this is where I get a bit annoying, I'm afraid, because I can't tell you who the winner of these three is. Now, it's not that I won't or that I'm sworn to secrecy. It's just that at the moment, I genuinely don't know. You see, the top secret results are under lock and key, ready to be revealed on the 27th of March at the New York Auto Show. So I'm afraid, just like me, you're going to have to wait until then but we will have details of all of the winners, including the best car in the world, on the electrifying.com website on the 27th of March. And you can also check out the World Car Awards website too. And if you want to check out videos on all of these cars, then some links should appear somewhere here on the screen. And if you aren't already, please do subscribe to the channel and switch your notifications on, because if electric cars are your thing, the good, the bad, and the indifferent, then this is the place for you.